Hello everybody, welcome to Five Idiots, part two of this episode. Um, we have just decided to go to Steelbury. Um, I, I thought what we could have done as well, we could have asked Kalon if like, you know, the council, to ask the council if they could procure us like, you know, some means of transportation, right? Like a wagon, horses, that kind of thing. <laughs> like a car? <laughs> Like a car, yeah. No, like a wagon. You know, horses and that, a right? Kangaroo. Time is of the essence. Time, you know, Flagel asking for a kangaroo while it was completely idiotic. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> that's pretty fast travel. <laughs> you know, we do. You know, horses would be a good idea, right? <laughs> so I think that'd be good. So you're gonna do? Is there an intro for the second uh, half, or? No, no. We just we just crack straight. We into just take it. it away. Just take it away. Okay, so the four of you, the five of you, walk back into um, back into the rowdy gnome, and um, Elliot, you see the very, very familiar form of uh, Rolock Don Knackle, uh sitting over at these couches in front of the the large bearskin and the uh, uh, the fireplace, which is which is crackling lightly in the uh, in the midday. Um, I don't want to say sun in the midday uh, uh, here at the uh, at uh, the rowdy gnome. <laughs> I you know I, I wait you know raise my hand in greeting and I I move over to him and I say you know good afternoon Wallach how 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 is your stay how are you doing? <laughs> oh gentlemen, gentlemen, please sit down. <laughs> Stop it, Jim! You're gonna make me break character. Gentlemen, please please sit down. I, I I take a seat next to uh, next to Rolock. Ah, uh, I've been thinking of your situation very very heavily. I have also conversed with some of my counterparts back in Steelbury. I fear that you have been placed on this path, Elliot, for a reason. Though we do not know what that reason is, but we do know. That you must see it through, Elliot Denon. Well, I have to admit, I'm not a massive fan of, uh, you know, divine purpose and whatnot. I don't know if this is divine or not. But I do know that this will have world-breaking events, potentially. Simply contemplate what will happen to organized religion if we find out that there is something that predates that. While we have heard of the old gods, and what, Jim, you can look at me. <laughs> I really can't. <laughs> and and well, while we have histories mentioning the old gods, you must think of these histories, Elliot. You must realize that there was nothing that confirmed this. Just as those who used to worship the sun and our three moons this was one of those or so we thought more simple times with more simple gods and goddesses but if you have truly come across one of the old gods and if he or she has mentioned that there are others what then becomes of us what then becomes of those like the chief engineer or for that matter, the elven gods and goddesses, or the human patrons. What then? Well, I, 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 you know, I don't particularly uh, have too much care for the future of the organized religions, but I certainly agree that you know, Night Demon's presence here could be world-changing, perhaps world-ending. If he is what he says he is, then you know, there are you know, severe and significant ramifications for for the entire world. Mm, Dacker, else... Dacker at this point, sorry, at this point, Dacker will like, sit, you know, burst in. He's not the sharpest tool in the box, is he? So he doesn't care about what's going on, really. He's just going to say to, uh, you know, this little gnome fella, so do you think that he's actually real? Do you think he's actually a god? I do not know. Mm. But what we do know, or what we think, is that if there is a proven existence... Stop it, Jim. 
If there's a proven existence. <laughs> your, your allergies playing up there, uh, Master Bullock? Yes. <laughs> I killed the fucking gym. I'm trying to get through this gym, you're killing me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll do my best. If there is a proven existence of something that predates our deities, then there must be something. Thing that potentially oh shit <laughs> no no you killed him by laughing jimmy for god's no, sake the absolute worst time for for the the the, uh, the internet of the... <laughs> <laughs> he was just talking the other day about how the internet people had been and replaced all the internet on the street and all the internet was fine now <laughs> oh man oh, god damn it god I need like a mask or something so I could just put it over my head and like. <laughs> no, only, that was weird. Only Discord crashed. It was only Discord. Oh. I've got everything else. Ooh, weird. Oh, okay. Uh, we don't get any cam, just FYI. Mm. Yeah, I'm working on that right now. Yeah, Discord's coming back up. Only Discord went down. Glorious. Whew, Jesus Christ, this is it's hard work. <laughs> Because it was great, you know, when when you were on when you were on uh, the uh, the ba the ballad of Elliot the Gnome, I was just able to lie in bed and uh, and have it on my phone, so it didn't matter that I was pissing myself laughing. Whereas now I can't. There's no way to hide. It's terrible. <laughs> Ooh, right. Okay, I'm I'm back from the bathroom. So just as something may predate our gods. Perhaps something predates them. Mm. I have conversed with several of the other heads <laughs> of the five families. <laughs> Damn it, Jim. It is. It is. God, I can't do this. Jimmy, kill me. It has been decided, Elliot, that you must see this through and that we will do everything within our power to support you in this. We must find out if the old gods do indeed exist, whether or not they are gods, whether or not they are simply powerful beings, whether or not they are simply individuals who have decided to take up the mantras of the ancient histories and pretend that they are these individuals. Well. We must know. I have asked the council back in Steelbury to begin scouring the library there to begin looking for any mention of the old gods and of this night demon, if they truly exist. I fear that even if we do find information, it will be minimal, but something is better than nothing. You must confront him. You must find out what it is that makes him whom he is. And ultimately then, only then, can we decide what to do in this situation. I do know this, organized religion has been here since the dawn of time. We know that there is basis for it. And he looks over at Daka specifically, right? Even you, Sir, who give the facial appearances of not believing in the organized religions. Surely Eliod 
has shown you the power of the chief engineer. And even if one does not acknowledge the religion, one must acknowledge the water that is drawn from the well, be it under any other form. You must find out. Be careful, my friends. I have decided to stay here in Victor to assist in any way that I can. Elliot, I thank you for the gift of the wine, my friend. It's my pleasure. And to be honest, you say I must go back. Well, as much respect as I have for you and well, to some extent, the you know the church. I I will do what I I'll do what I want, but I want to go back, and I must go back, and you know I will try and you know divine what I can from this being, and we will make the Steelbury, and you know hopefully you know the researchers will be there to meet us, and you know they can tell us what what they found if if anything. So then, <clears throat> then um, Rolak looks over at Dmitriev. You wear the silver ring. But where is Elliot's, I wonder? Uh, it's an honor to meet you, Gnome. Um, I believe we, we had a bit of a difficult spot in our last battle. And uh, I believe I told him to take it off. Do not lose your companionship, for it is the only thing that makes you strong, gentlemen. The five of you are obviously set upon this path for a reason. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you. We'll need it. So he doesn't stand up or anything. He just simply goes back to he's he's sipping that wine that Elliot had given him. <clears throat> and honestly, if there's any conversation anybody would like to have with him, he's he's just simply sitting here wide open. Back up. I don't think there's anything. Uh... Well, you know, he says the research is there, right? I'm sure they'll meet us when when we go there. <clears throat> I think it's. I mean, Elliot's Bravo. told him we're going, right? It's... How did you reach your researchers, Rolok? Uh, carry your uh, pigeon? <laughs> There's a spell carry. you can you can prepare actually, Elliot, level three. Carry your kangaroo? Can, you can you can talk to somebody like a few lines or something and they can talk back to you. I can't remember what it's Oh called. yeah, like met sending or something. Mm. Mm. Once you reach the rank of platinum, you will know, Elliot, for you will be within that inner circle. Know that each of us keeps tabs upon one another in order to ensure that nothing happens to our organized religion like happened in the past. Lines of communication are always open. Is there anyone in Stillbury who will know specifically about all gods? Do you have a, like an expert there who's going to know? Like, is there one of you? Because I mean, obviously you have your fields that you research. Is there is there someone specific that we could find that would know more? Are you planning on traveling to Stillbury? Oh. Oh yeah, we're we going for it. We can, can we not? Four days and then the you ring will take You definitely may if you choose. There is nothing against that. I just was unaware of that. I will send message ahead for the great librarian to prepare what they find. However, understand that a few days' time may not be time enough to find anything of consequence. Though there is always luck. Not for us. <laughs> yeah, but see me play Blood Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yes. 
That game that does not have any gnomes. <laughs> it doesn't fumble, actually. <laughs> but right, let, let, let's work getting too far out. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe therein lies our answer. Mm. Well, he's Never saying... mind games of chess against death. Maybe we should challenge Night Demon to a game of Blood Bowl. Or a game of gnomes. Or Connect Four. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So are you saying that it's a waste of time going to Stillberry? Is that your opinion? It is never a waste to seek knowledge, my friend. Just be aware that the longer you leave open the tap of truth, the more bowls you will fill. <laughs> God, that was something I want to say, but I'm not going to say it. Um, so here's... Please tell me what is on your mind, Daka. <laughs> no, no, it was really bad. A really bad joke. Right, what we're going to do is, we're going to, like, we're not going to, all we can do is think, right? Like, there's no resources here to help us in 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 Victor. So, traveling, we can think while we travel, right? Like, that's just going to give us more mm. time to think about things. Yeah. So, so traveling is a win-win, right? And then when we get there, they might have discovered something, we might discover something. I, I think traveling to Steelbury is the best idea. All round. Agreed, Dagger. When I commune with my brothers and sisters, I shall inform them of your arrival several days from now. May your journey be a fast and safe one, my friends. Eliad, when you get there, seek out the great librarian. He will know what to do. He will give you what they have found. Thank you, Olok, for the advice. I will do that. Right. This wine is mystical. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? How much for a bottle? Well, you can ask... Um, oh, oh, Nam Foodle, can't you? I, get, I left the last bottle with her. Mm -hmm. <gasps> there was a few bottles there, though, wasn't there, in the, in the thing? Did we I only all took take? two. Did you guys take any? I thought we all. Elliot took two. was the only one who took two. Oh, diced. diced. I didn't even realise I'd taken any. To be honest, so... <laughs> pretty sure we all took one. Yeah, I thought, I thought we all. <laughs> of course, took why one. would Dimitri have leave any alcohol behind? I, I yeah. thought I took seven. To be honest. Yeah, I thought I thought I, thought I took you know ten. I thought it, I thought each one was I I corked each one with a scimitar. <laughs> Daka, fall of a took. Took right. Anyway, um <clears throat> So yeah, let's 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 head out then, eh? Chaps. Yeah, let's go to Steelberry. I am gonna can I take my horse? Yeah, we should go your by horse. horse. We should go by horse. Or my pony slash horse. We need we need horses, like we need horses, right? We need like a horse drawn, you know, like a wagon or something, right? Because there's five of us plus the Well plus I the have cultist. a horse, like I don't know about you guys. Yeah, but I mean we need like to pull the wagon, right? That's the big thing. What wagon? What are we taking a wagon for? We need a wagon because, like, that's all easier. All of a sudden, Daka's got a wagon. Everybody's got, you know, Flargo's a king. Daka's got a wagon. No, we need a wagon. I'm saying we need a, a wagon. Then, then we can just then we can have it pulled by like two horses rather than needing like five, six horses, right? Two horses and a wagon's got to be easier than six horses, right? Well, we haven't got the gold for that. Well, that's why I said. That's why I asked K uh, Kalon if he, you know, if he can source one for us. What did he say? Didn't get a reply. <laughs> he didn't ask Kalon if you could source a wagon. <laughs> I did. I did. I did at the start of the episode. Literally, <laughs> what I said. Literally, I what asked Kalon for four M1 tanks. Can you do yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, a bit of transportation is quite all right. I mean, it? now, now, Jack. Well, come on, like, let's be realistic. <laughs> so, what's the plan then? We ride. Saddle up. Yeah, we saddle up. And we, we ride to West Steelbury. I mean, to be fair, like, a gnome and a goblin can, like, get on the back of my horse. No problem, mate. That's not, like, an issue. It's just Jimmy. We're denser than we look. <laughs> you can like, say that um, again. I'm sure a horse could carry a goblin and a gnome. So, what, so honestly, what's the plan? So, you, you still have to figure out... I mean, you're going to take this cultist with you, right? 
Yeah, yeah. The, pl- yeah. the plan was to ask Kalon if we, if like you know, they can source us a wagon or something because you know there's going to be. Six well, we only probably all need one horse. Yeah, right? exactly. If yeah, you... like just need one more horse. If you can get a horse, you can carry the prisoner, and I'll carry Flago and Elliot. <laughs> and what's he called? <laughs> The fuck, fucking no, no, you're Elon. carrying him. You're carrying him. Elon. Oh, Elon. Elon. Oh, we need two horses then. We need two horses, and then I'll carry Elliot, and Elon can carry Flagel. So, so Doc, are you? So you, you're going to put the cultists on the back of your horse behind you? No, no, you. no, no, in the front of the horse, like cuffed, and then Daka's arms around him. Is that is that honestly the plan? No, oh, the no, plan no, was no, to get no. a wagon. Tie, the plan was a wagon with drawn no, by two horses. Then we only need one more horse. Feet. You tie his hands and his feet, and you lay him like his belly. Yeah, like a bounty, saddle. like a like yeah, a bounty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. The plan like, is to get a wagon, right? A wagon. Oh, we don't need a wagon. We need two horses. Yeah, a wagon and some horses. That's the, like. Why that's... do we need a wagon? What's the because then wagon then you for? can ride a wagon. That's way better than fucking all going on separate horses. Well, no, we just need to... Like, if you're going to get two horses, there's no point in a wagon. <laughs> why, do you, why do you think horses is better than a wagon? A wagon's because clearly I've better. Because I've got a horse. I was like saying a motorbike's horse. better than an SUV. We've just all gone five, we've gone five motorbikes and carry like, what, everyone on the is, back of a what, motorbike. What is on the wagon? Like, what is on the wagon? Everybody else and the prisoner. <laughs> yeah, but if Elon's if Elon's on a horse, Flagel Snap is on the horse with him. Elliot's on the horse with me, and you take the prisoner on a horse. But so it's we need four horses. No, 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 no. We need, oh, I've already got best. one. I've already Elliot, got one. Elliot, do not encourage oh, this. Shit. No, 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 no. I miscounted. No, I miscounted the horses. He's, he's like... We need a wagon. That's what we need. We, need, we don't need ask a wagon, Kalon. Jim. Ask Kalon if he's got something. He'll have we, something. we did ask Kalon, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We did ask him. He didn't give us an answer yet. <laughs> okay, so let's let's shorten this up because we're having more discussion about the wagon versus the horses than we are even about Night Demon, which is brilliant, right? <laughs> yes. so, there, there, there's there, there's more there's more uh, uh, working out than, than 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 the Night Demon. So you go back to Kalon, you ask him for a wagon because honestly, that's probably the only way you're going to be able to carry this prisoner, right? Yes. Um, so you source a wagon with a couple of horses. Um, Daka will will drive said wagon. Um, Dimitrov can ride his horse. The 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 uh, gnome and the goblin can kind of ride as well. Um, we'll say that the wagon has two or three um, rings um, uh, secured in it, where you can pass the manacle chain through, and then manacle your prisoner so that he can sit up. But he's he's his his hands is his arms are manacled to the wagon itself. Hmm. So he's comfortable, but he's not. Crazy comfortable, right? Yep. And Caleb's Does the wagon have a steel cage? <laughs> no, the wagon will not have a steel cage. The wagon will have a ring <laughs> to where you can manacle <laughs> the, the, this guy to it. Um, and so, they, yeah, they're, he's I willing to request the steel cage from he's, he's He's very willing to offer you that wagon, without a doubt. Yeah. And the extra and the horse to uh, pull that wagon. Yep. Thanks. And Thanks, a steel Kalon. cage. No, no, we don't need a steel cage. Thanks, Kalon. And obviously the prisoner, the, uh, the the council have said yes to the prisoner, right? Yeah, the count, Yeah, definitely. He just had to get approval, not... Um, he, he was yours from the get-go. Right. Glorious. Well, let's go then. Let's get moving, chaps. So um, we'll say it's midday now on the 15th. You guys pile in this wagon. Nam Foodle gives you... Um, Elliot Namfoodle is more than happy to provide um, gnomish rations, which are actually better than most human meals, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, more than enough for, we'll say, you know, 10 days. Obviously, you shouldn't need that to get all the way down there, and you could resupply once you're down there as well. Um, you guys pile in this wagon. You've got all of your belongings. Um, Jim, are you – so is everybody bringing, like, all their gold and all of that good stuff? I mean, what, what are we doing there now? Because well, I know you put some of it away, but... Well, I guess they're taking the rest, right? That's why I put mine away, so I was travelling light. <laughs> I'm not like, taking my gold with me. Well, I want to buy some souvenirs in Steelboy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a while since I returned to my gnomish homelands. Yeah, to be fair, they might, they might have like magic. They might have a magic crossbow, or whatever, and what if I can't afford it? So yeah, I'll get some money out. I'll get I'll get the money out that I put in extra. <laughs> Okay, so um, is so, 
How many? How many gold is in there? Like traveling with Michelle. Um, we've got thirty-eight for everyone. Is in the is in my place, and I'm gonna get out what I want. Okay, so there is some some consideration here of the fact that you guys will all be walking around jingling very loudly, right? Yeah. You know, it's one thing to have 10, 12, 15 gold. It's one, it's another thing for each of you to have near a hundred, mm. which you can do if you choose. But remember that the um, uh, that the Rothwell House does offer gems that you can purchase. There's a 5% markup. So if you wanted a 100 gold piece gem, you'd have to pay 105 for it. And then you could then take that, and that one or two gems is a lot lighter, doesn't make as much noise and all of that good stuff as you travel. That is totally up to you all. No deal. No, I'm taking my gold. <laughs> I'm not going to get shafted on 5%, Mr. 5%. They don't, they don't, you know, they, they're charging 190 for for breastplates. They're not giving me money for my scimitars. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe they'll buy scimitars in Steelbreed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will take all my gold out as well, please. <laughs> all are you gold. so are you, are you just yeah. carrying your gold then too? Is everybody just going to carry their gold? Oh, I would That's say steel bowie. I mean, I'm I'm leaving some in. I'm leaving some in. I'm leaving some of mine in the in the thing and taking some. All right, so, but Elliot's taken all of his. Yeah. Okay. Got got some. Gold on me, so I leave my thirty-eight in the bank. Yeah. Yeah, so, so Dakar and Flagel have got 38 each in the bank. Can, can, oh, I, beautiful. can I see my dude so I can mark on him on my sheet? Yes, me too. Your dude? Please. One second. My dude. Thank you. Thank you. You got it. Um, What about little Jimmy? What's yeah. happening with little Jimmy during this time? Yeah, well, presumably... um. Because nobody's spoken to Namfoodle yet, right? Oh, Ooh, yeah. God. Right, yeah. You, that's your job, Elliot, the nom. <laughs> well, I guess after we spoke to um, Rolock in uh, in the in the rowdy gnome, I you know I head over to the bar and I you know wave wave at Namfoodle. And say hello. Okay, so well, you're like, hi. You're like, well, well, yeah, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm just like, hello. yeah. So she comes out. It's very, it's a very simple conversation, right? She's, she knows who little Jimmy is. She knows little Jimmy well because you know, as as Kalon mentioned, um, little Jimmy ferrets around town, and and there's never a place that he stops where he couldn't find food. Right, the the town somewhat adopted him, but he would never stay in the same place overnight. There's there's thoughts, Elliot, and we talked about this with Daka, that he's got like a little campsite, like maybe built in a couple of oversized bushes that he's, you know, somewhere just outside of town that he just kind of calls his own because he kind of disappears. He doesn't stay like inside the Rowdy Gnome or didn't before. Doesn't stay inside the restaurants that he goes to. Um, but like I said, he just sometimes he just shows up, walks in, and then there's just you know everybody's like, oh, we've got your plate ready, right? So he doesn't feel like an like an like an asshole. Sure. So I I say it's Um, you know, li little Jimmy is being forced to stay in the church at the moment. Not a pleasant place, I can imagine. I don't know why the magistrate has sent him there, really. Um, yeah, I'm I'm heading over to Steelboy. We'll be gone for, well, at least four days, maybe longer. We have, you know, grave business to attend to after that. So while I'm away, you know, uh, you know, l little Jimmy, you know, could stay in my room. Would that be okay with you? Oh, absolutely. You can stay in your room. It's your room. What of the seven men at arms? I'm sorry, the seven man servants that are still here. Well, it's they're more than welcome, but I want to make sure that 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 is still what is wanted for them. Um, I mean, I guess we could bring them, well, sidebar, sidebar, do, do we want them to stay here? Oh, no, they're just servants, aren't they? They're, they're not here. Yeah, they're yeah, just, yeah, they're, they, they're... I think they stay here then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they can stay here, if, if that's okay. Okay, so, Elliot, so, again, the, the gnomish um, um, hospitality is world-renowned, right? <laughs> but do you feel any need to assist in that hospitality in any way? Oh, so I, I offer, I mean, I did give her a very expensive bottle of wine, but I, I, I say, you know, do you need any extra payment for that? So um, you wouldn't ask that. 
you would either do it or not, and either way, she's fine with it. Oh, okay, so I offer her, I don't know, one gold piece for each night that Jimmy's staying there. Let's call it, I don't know, let's call it, I don't know, eight gold. Who knows how long we're going to be gone. So without even acknowledging you or acknowledging it, she just, you know, pulls the coins into her hand and, 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 and puts them away in a pouch. It's insinuated, it's understood that this is for the, 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 um, the Rowdy Gnome in general. However, it's going to find its way to completely take care of little Jimmy and, and, the, uh, and the seven others. Well, um, be back soon, hopefully, Nam Foodle. You know, take care, etc. Uh, see you later. So, <clears throat> you pile into this. You pile into this wagon, right? You go, Daka. You're while he's talking to Nam Foodle. Daka, you go and get the prisoner, right? Yep. You walk this prisoner out. He's in hand manacles and feet manacles. You're walking, and he is just. He comes out into the light of day, and he, he kind of, you know, his hands raise up to his face. As he, as he blocks the sunlight, um, he's walking very tall. You know, he's like, yeah, man, I'm going to go. Because he thinks he's going to see the friggin' Night Demon, right? <laughs> is that is that where he believes he's going? Mm -hmm. Or have you told him we're going somewhere else first? No, no, that's that's okay. Yeah, we can we can let him believe okay. what he wants. We're not going to talk so, to him. So, yeah, he thinks he's going to see Night Demon. He sees this wagon. He hops as best he can hop, right? He's, <laughs> he uses his, his hands together to kind of put his knee up and... He can't separate his legs very far, but he's able to kind of roll in. You un unlock one manacle. You pass it through the ring. You relock the manacles around his hands. He holds them out. He's, you know, he's very accommodating, right? You place a little water skin next to him. Maybe you place a small leather bag that has, you know, some rations in it that if he ever feels like just, just tossing something in his mouth, right? Um. And then everybody kind of rallies back and, and, and rounds about the, uh, the wagon again. Um, is there anything else that anybody else wants to do prior to us taking off? I take the Russians away from the prisoner. <laughs> so the little gnome scurries up, right, and walks up. And as he's passing by, as he's walking by the prisoner, all you see is a little, little, little gnome, Jesus, little <laughs> goblin hand, little green goblin hand with some scales on the back of it, right? Just come down and grab the uh, rations, and then he takes a seat, and the rations get plopped right on the wooden seat next to him. C can I do a perception check, please? Of course. So, to see if I noticed Dadle stealing the rations. Oh, you saw it. No, there was no... He didn't even try to... Oh, okay. Well, he didn't I... try to hide it, did you, Dadle? You just took him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, he just, he just walking by and just... You know, you know like, a, like an older brother who steals his younger brother's dinner, right? Just grabs it and goes. No. I don't. I just don't think that he deserves them. So, well, it's I, not like an older brother. It's just. Well, no. What I mean is, like, with 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 just pure, like, it's mine. I'm taking it. That type of thing. <laughs> well, I wait until Dadle's back, Flagel's back is turned, and then I then I surreptitiously give them some more rations for my own supply. <laughs> So he looks over at the goblin's back and just, you know, a slight grimace and just takes those rations and kind of tucks them. He's got his hands kind of together and he's got the sleeves on, right, of this, these, this white shirt and white, white pant. And he just kind of puts that hand underneath the, the, the um, earth into the sleeve of the other arm and just kind of keeps it there. Daka takes his position on the front of this wagon. Yep. Dimitrov, you've got your horse now. What is your horse's name, Dimitrov? Did, didn't we decide? Yeah, it's Forrest. That's right. Forrest. For, 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 Forrest the horse. <laughs> that way you can scream what? Forrest. <laughs> run, Forrest, run. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Exactly, Jim. Um, well, shouldn't it so be Gallop, is... Forrest, Gallop? <laughs> So, Daka, you've seen his horse before. Elliot, this is the first time that you've seen Dimitri on his horse. Same with you, Flargal. I kind um, of walk past the horse, and like as, I, as I'm as i going around, I'm like, whoa, looking up at like, Dimitri on his horse. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> your, your eyeball level two. <laughs> 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 so, anyways, uh, um, but yeah, so, <laughs> so everybody piles into the wagon. You know, Dadle's already there. Um, I'm sorry, Flargo's already there. 
Um, uh, Elliot hops up and in after admiring the horse, and now he's up and in there. And um, and that's it. You guys take off and you head south to Steelbury, right? Now, Elliot, you know this route well from a standpoint of you only traveled this route some six months prior, right? Indeed. So let me pull up the uh, let me pull up the map real quick. So here's Victa, as we've mentioned before, right? And then the lake. We know the manor is somewhere around this location up here. And the road down to Steelbury, you travel down the uh, north road here. You come to the you come to the Cowlin Way, and then right about here in the upper spine, you take a smaller pathway, a, a less traveled pathway. Though traveled nonetheless, there are wagon markings. Um, it is worn into the ground. It's not like a... Uh, an, uh, an untraveled thing, right? And you head into the into the um, into the upper spine. To your right, a large volcano is is it's not actively erupting, but there is the glow of lava in the evening. There is dark smoke erupting from the plume pretty consistently, um, and that that is well known as as the Jarl. Um, that's a location that there is a small city. To, Demetri Evandaka, you would have passed on your way in traveling the Upper Spine a small town called Locke. And Locke specializes in taking this lava, and they've, they've, they've got ways of their blacksmiths there are, are very well known for their arrows, their crossbow bolts, basically ammunition utilizing both obsidian and um, the lava itself as a means of superheating that obsidian in order to get it to chip into the correct formations. It's very well known in that area, right? Mm. Um, there are some other things. They're also known for their um, um, their medical implements, obsidian being something that you can sharpen very small. So a lot of surgeons travel there in order to um, collect their medical instruments. A lot of individuals who may um, experiment with, um, or I should experiment's not the right word, but um, those who are interested in physiology of, you know, whether it be human body, gnomish bodies, horses, whatever those are, right? Um, because those, they're, they're very, very, very sharp, and they can be made into very, very fine points. Um, mm. Things like that. But the upper spine is a low set of hills. Um, there are some smallish mountains, nothing crazy, nothing that couldn't be, you know, peaked in, in a couple, three, four hours. Um, but Elliot, you start to feel more at home as you get into the spinal area, as you get into the spine, right? Because, you know, you, when you left Steelbury for Victa at that time, your, your intention, what was your intention when you left Elliot? What was it to stop in Victa and stay there? Were you going to move further north to some of the larger towns? Were you going to move, you know, west over to the coast? What was, what was Elliot? What was well, his I, thought process? What was he tasked with? I mean, I was a I was a young sort of researcher. You know, I I was I taking a sabbatical from my research basically. So I'd gone to visit my friend Nam Foodle in Victor, and then I was planning to you know visit some other nearby towns. Nothing too exotic, nothing too far away, uh, but just get out a little bit uh, over a period of twelve months or so before going back home to do my research. So it's so you're returning a lot earlier then. Yeah, yeah, I was expecting to be gone for a few more months, yeah. And, um, and Jimmy, you and, um, I'm sorry, Daka, you and, um, Dimitriev, you guys are from Blake's, mm -hmm. which is the other side of the spine. And Stamps Forest here is where Dimitriev did a lot of his fighting, up and down this forest lane. Mm -hmm. So... To my knowledge, you've never traveled via the North Road towards Cullen at all, correct? Yeah. So this is new territory for you, and you're you know you're you're somewhat you're somewhat taken aback by the fact that you're actually going to visit a gnomish enclave because humans have very little reason to. They have phenomenal locations of learning, though. If you're not gnomish, you're not invited, unless you can provide a learning environment for the gnomish peoples. Um, they do accept trade, though you're not a trader. 
they do um, they do accept travel for the purpose of um, offering uh, books, other forms of knowledge like that as well. Though that's not your purview, correct? Mm, so, yeah. um, go ahead, Demetrio. Yeah, I was going to say like um, like me and uh, Daka, we when we moved to Victor, we just sort of huddled together and we uh, we didn't take the north road did we i don't believe we took another route yeah so and then um Florgal snarp this is a little you're traveling east and you don't like traveling east right i mean i like traveling to the goblin town and this is where i know i need to go yeah, but you're getting a little, even if it's a little bit closer, it's a little bit closer to the mountains that you're originally from, which is way the hell over here in the lower reach, right? Mm -hmm. So this is just a little bit of a little bit of a history lesson for everybody as to kind of where you're from again, and then also some backstory for, for chat itself. So you move in through the spine, you get in, you're, you're kind of, you're kind of wrapping in and around these, these small where hillocks. Is the town? I can't see it on the map. So there, it's, it's not necessarily a town, but it's over here in the lower reach. These are where your caves are, or were, before you let everybody out. <laughs> and when you let them out, you moved up towards the cloud breakers here, which is where you kind of dropped everybody before you bailed, right? Yeah. And where's the gnome town? The gnome town is located right down here in the upper spine. Okay. So you're going around these hillocks, you're going, in, and Elliot, this is starting to feel more and more familiar, right? You, These are the hillsides that as a, as a child you would have played with other gnomish children, you know? It wasn't unlike the gnomes for you to be gone for a day at a time, all day long, you know, investigating these hills, bringing back rock samples, bringing back metal samples, bringing back, you know, uh, uh, plant samples. All of them were well known, but as a kid it was like, oh, what's this, and, you know, so on and so forth. And you reach a um, you reach a a a very well beautifully carved cave entrance, right? And it's you can see that it's a natural formation, but that it's been finished. It's rounded beautifully. It's probably thirty feet in height, maybe thirty or forty feet across, and it's finished off about ten feet in from the from from the interior edge all the way around right and these are all the markings of history from steelbury right there's you notice immediately that there are several cogs for the church of the i'm sorry for the um yes for the church of the chief engineer there's also a, a, a myriad of other magical um not magical but church related markings there's the words in gnomish a steelbury at the very top it is not a place that is hidden from view right however it is it is it, it's a very sacred you're, you're from you're from a very sacred location which is steelbury how do you feel kind of returning uh, I'm, I'm happy i'm not um uh, as you said i was um not expecting to be home this soon already <clears throat> And part of me is a little sort of a tiny little bit of me that's a little sad that I didn't sort of complete my adventuring as I'd liked and see quite as much as I tra traveled as much as quite as I wanted. However, I certainly hadn't imagined seeing the kind of you know sights and the experience the kind of experiences that I did experience. I was on my gap year. I did not intend to get tied up in all this sort of cultist stuff with people getting murdered and everything. So like I'm you know I'm pretty shook. And and so I'm I'm. It's nice to see the comforting, uh, you know, confines of Steelberry for sure. I'm happy to return. Let's see if this will open up here because I haven't downloaded it into it yet. Mm. So, if it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm not sure if it will. Yeah, there's um. It's not opening up. So. Steelbury, yeah, it's. Um, I, I hadn't put the map on there. I hadn't. I had anticipated you guys going there, but not this fast. Mm -hmm. So, um, as you as you go through the initial cave network into Steelbury, you see several El or, um, Dimitriev, 
uh, Flargle Snarp, and Daka. There's a lot of gnomes, man. <laughs> I mean, there's a whole bunch of right there's all of these red tinted goggles, blue tinted goggles, green tinted goggles. There's yellow tinted goggles. I mean, it's there's Glorious. pointy hats everywhere, no, right? There's they're they're red. I'm it's 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 crazy, right? Because it's defend. you can see I that it's defend. they are um they're worn with honor. It's not like it's not like this cartoonish thing. It's you're just amongst a very different peoples, and these gnomes, they're always every one of them is smiling. They're they're greeting you with hands open. Um, Several of them recognize um, Elliot. Elliot, you just recognize five or six or ten mundane friends here or there. We don't even have to go over names or anything, but they recognize you. Um, Steelbury is a very tight community. What did you say? I was just waving at the domes. Oh, I thought you were tapping your ear like you couldn't. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, I, they, they all oh. break out in song, right? It's Elliot, it's Elliot. No, they don't. So, <laughs> so <laughs> diced again, right? So as you're as you're traveling through here, you notice that the cave network is somewhat lit by all these different sources of glowing um, fungi glowing um, uh, mushrooms, a whole bunch of different, and it's all a myriad of different colors, but they all coalesce into just a soft grayish, bluish light. And it's amazing how with how high these caves are and how tall these caves are, that they're offering as much light as they can. And then you notice that on the buildings themselves, that there is a whole, there uh, in almost every every section, there are pieces of glass that are set against metal that are reflecting this light back. So it's almost as if you have a series of mirrors just set about this entire cave network and cave system where the light is, is coming down from above, is hitting these buildings, is reflecting off of another building, is moving over to another building, off of another rooftop, but it's all coalescing throughout this entire cave network. And everything is remarkably, it's like a very soft dawn. It's remarkably well lit. And you see these, you see a whole bunch of gnomes moving off, doing different things, right? There are some gnomes with smaller wagons, some gnomes with, um, with wheelbarrows, some gnomes that are, that are moving in robes. A few of them actually look like they're from Eliad's um, um, church itself. And they're reading books and, 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 and talking to each other in Gnomish, obviously talking about whatever subjects are in the books. They seem like a very learned individuals who are very focused on whatever it is that they are doing. Mm. Elliot, where, where would you take them first? Oh, I mean, as, as well, what time is it? What time is it? Uh, we'll say it's just midday of day four that you've traveled because you left, you left midday, Victor. I mean, we're, we're head. I mean, time is of the essence, right? We head straight for the central Gnomeberry, and uh, straight to the, uh, the the chief librarian that uh, that uh, 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 no. Uh, um, you have the great librarian. Yeah, Rollock. The Rollock, uh, in you know, told me to see. They, they told you about. Yep. So, so the great librarian, when he or she is named the great librarian, they forego their previous name. From that point forward, it doesn't matter who they were or what they were. They are known then as the great librarian, right? It's almost similar to the Pope, how the Pope would change his or her name, right? Well, his name in our case. Um, so the great librarian is literally just that, the great librarian. So as you guys, as the as you travel on your wagon, in fact, do you, do you think that you park your wagon? What do you do with the prisoner? I, this is a large wagon, right? And now you're in, you're starting to travel into into areas where you could get this wagon through there with the horses, but would you continue to, to utilize that? Well, I was going to ask, it did like, you know, first of all, was the four days travel, was that walking? Like, have we got there faster by going by horse? No, it, it would have been just regular weather, uh, however you chose to travel there, four days. If you, I, I knew you guys weren't just simply going to walk. 
Right. And uh, the second thing is, did Elliot, like, obviously this is like, this is like, you know, four days of travel. Did Elliot mm. manage to get any information out of the prisoner in these, in these four days? Yeah. And were we talking to each other? You know, what did we say to each other? Well, that's, that's so, so tell me about that time frame then. You tell me. Well, so we're kind of like huddling up around the campfire or whatever, night one. It's been a tough day of traveling, you know, we even. Yeah, and incidentally, the, the, the cultist is not very happy. But the prisoner told us everything. He confessed. Yeah, he's not happy days. at all because he knows it's about a day's. It's about two days travel, and it's to the north, right? Mm. And you okay. guys went south. Now he's not going to be like, I'm going to screw you guys. But he's not. Now he's like, dude, where are you taking me? What's the purpose of this? So what? on and so forth. So unless you guys tell me that, that maybe you explained it to him. Maybe you told him, hey, we have a means of. What would you have shared with him along uh, along your travels? I think we'd use that to hang over him to get try and get information out of him, right? We're not just going to tell him things for fun. <laughs> no. Well, that's what I'm saying. But uh, so, but but if you, if you keep him in the dark, he's going to react like you're keeping him in the dark. Is what I'm getting at. Yeah. This but, is going to kind of determine what his reaction. But then, if he's keeping be. us in the dark, then we're going. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it goes both ways. So you know, there's just a. It depends how much trust he'd earned, right? To or like how much he'd earned to. How much you'd be told, I guess. You want to like keep him on the hook, don't you? You want to try and get information out of him. So you want to keep him happy enough that he keeps so talking. How, okay, so then tell me how you're keeping him happy enough then. Well, by giving him some information. If he's giving, I mean, this is the thing. It'd be down to the Elio the Nom to try and uh, to try and wangle this because he'd be the one oh. in in there with him, wouldn't he? Because I don't think Flagelsnap would be trying to get any information out of him. He'd just be wanting to steal his rations and kill him. <laughs> 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 bring a dagger in his throat. Yeah. Oh, Elliot's hat fell off the wagon. Oh no! He stop and get it. Well, I. I'd already stopped. We're at the campfire by now. Yeah, yeah you can. I, we can. We can role play this backwards. We're fine. I don't mind that a little bit. <laughs> as I uh, as I pass, you know, as I I'm clambering down from the wagon, and you know, D D Dimitrov was already taken down the prisoner and like lumped on the floor or whatever the prisoner says to me you know what the flip is going on gnome you know what i i thought we were going to uh to the uh to the tuluk mansion to uh to visit you know night demon uh, and we've clearly been traveling for longer than that would take you know what's the what's the deal uh, yeah this this conversation probably would have happened on night one because he saw i mean he knows yeah. the difference between north and south right <laughs> sure uh so i kind of you know I was going to say I kneel down to him, but I, that's uh, fairly. Uh, you would be you would be at eye level with him when he's sitting <laughs> yeah. up. I, so I stand up my tippy toes and, 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 look, and look into his eyes, and I say, "Well, my friend, uh, you know this is uh, this is this is our um, uh, this is you know our um, adventure now. This is this is this is our uh, our party, and it's." Um, and where we go and what we do uh, is up to us. Now, at some point, we may or may not be, you know, seeing, uh, you know, Night Demon, and probably whether you're there to see him will, you know, depend exactly on how you act for the next day, the next few days. But why do we head south? You had mentioned we were going to see him now. Well, how how about uh, how about we make some kind of quid pro quo? You know, you ask a question, I ask a question. Quid pro what? Uh, I don't know, is that the wrong one? Maybe it's the wrong one. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you... you <laughs> 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 fucking Latin, man. <laughs> quid, quid pro gnome. <laughs> um, you know, you know if, if, if you want to get some uh, information, then you'll have to share, I'm afraid. What information would you give me? When did you join this cult? What benefit do I have? What do you, we travel south? You promised me we'd be traveling north. We did not. Oh, I yeah I yeah, I'll, 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 if you want to know where we're going, then you'll answer my questions. Okay, so this is so this is a little precarious, right? Because first of all, he doesn't trust you. Second of all, you took him in the wrong direction, and now you're saying you want information to tell him why you're going in the wrong direction. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. If 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 he wants to know things from us, then yeah, we'll we'll find out things from him. Thank you very much. Yeah. No, that's fine. Okay. 
So give me a um, give me a persuasion check at disadvantage. I mean, you're, you're, you haven't given him anything, and I don't mean you need to give him, I don't mean you need to bribe him, you don't need to do anything, but you've told him you're going to head back to see Night Demon, you're heading south, and then your first question to him is, tell me why you joined, and I'll tell you where we're going. Right? It's good I mean, moment. I have lots of older questions. If I, could, I could give him some of those as well, if he prefer. <laughs> I just said, so what did you say, Elliot? I'm sorry? I said, I have lots of alternate questions instead of uh, the one I asked. <laughs> What do you care about why I joined the cult? Well, that's two for you now, so uh, I, 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 I care because um, I'd like to join myself. <laughs> from what I saw in the catacombs, what I saw of Night Demon, I, I've kept it from the others, but I have to admit I'm, I'm, I've kept I'm, it from I'm, the others. I'm, ve I'm very impressed. I'm absolutely <laughs> in awe, you know, my uh, my relationship with my... Uh, God damn it! I, it's difficult, man! Oh, no. <laughs> my relationship with my own deity has been shattered, and, and quite honestly, I I think this is this is exactly the, 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 the grand entity to fill the void. So, you know, tell me more. Okay, so give me another. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for another persuasion check again at disadvantage on this one because you murdered all of his brothers and sisters, all of the high priests. Like we 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 did. It's true, but that was before that was before um you know I I laid my eyes on Night Demon. That was before I became a convert. Okay, so okay, let's see how this would go. So you mentioned just the mentioning of Night Demon. You tell, you can see, puts him a little bit more at ease. Every time you say the words Night Demon. Well, right? perhaps... So, sorry, so there's, sorry. A, there's some insight there. Um, he looks around suspiciously, right? He looks. He doesn't look at you. He looks at Daka. He's trying to see what Daka's doing. He's trying to see what Dimitriov is doing. He's trying to see what Elon's doing. He's trying to see what, what Flargo's doing. And he says... The way of the old gods is, it's a very specific one, very specific. He only accepts those who dedicate themselves to him truly. Oh, I'm, I'm ready for some specificity. My direction in life up until this point has been, you know, so vague. My old deity, um, you know, was was so totally unfulfilling for me, and was clearly you know not the kind of person, not the not the kind of entity that should be guiding, you know, guiding the world and guiding gnome kind forward. I'm I'm ready to be set on a path. You know, I'm 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 ready for night demon. But maybe this could work another way. Perhaps if you would, you know, perhaps you you answer some of my questions, and I tell you a little bit about your god. About your god? Yeah, about your god. I saw him. Have you ever seen oh, him? Oh, I see what you're saying now. Okay, I'm so, no, no, I was asking you. I should have set out a character. Oh, okay, oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay, I see what you're, where you're going with this now. <laughs> All right. Um, so now, and then tell me out of character, how truthful is Elliot being right now? Oh, not truthful at all. He's decent. Okay, he's I just wanted to make yeah, sure yeah. because... <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> there, there will be ramifications. <laughs> so yeah. I just want to... You know, and I don't like to do that because it kind of can spoil things, but... Yeah. Okay, yeah, so... Give me another persuasion check, this time with advantage. Ooh. Okay, so... The night, the night Demon chooses you. You don't choose the Night Demon. Well, if, if that is true, then... Surely I stand before you more chosen than yourself. You know, I have conversed with him, I have seen him, I have bartered with him. You know, the the night night demon has given me myself and my compatriots a task. You know, can you say the same thing? You know, surely I'm the worthy one here. What was he like? What what? Tell me about him. What was it like to be in his presence? How did you feel? He was very very tall. When did you join the cult? <laughs> He's so so. <laughs> He doesn't like how you, he he doesn't like how you turn the conversation, right? <laughs> because you went from he's very tall. When did you join, right? Well, yeah, I tried to trade here. You know, I, I know I, you I, are. I, no, 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 he's I know not you are. He's, for free. And, he, and he senses that. I'm trying. So 
I have been with Mola Ram for two years now. What was he like? He had like white makeup with black lines on his face. It was a, a fearsome visage. Uh, where, where did you meet up with Noel Arm? And then, like, when you say it was a fearsome visage, you just see him, like, it, there's there's a sense of pride that's now coming from him. So what was your next question? Uh, wh where did you meet Noel Arm? How, how did you, well, okay, where did you meet Noel Arm? That was two questions, really. <laughs> that's okay. So um, where did you, wow, where did you meet Noel Arm? That's, that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> Noel Arm, we didn't, Noel Arm found us. We were drawn. The temple draws those who are chosen. So, um, okay. Well, two 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 years is a long time. You know what? So you were you were. But why 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 only? Why did the why did the killing only begin recently, or did it not? Has it been going on for the last two years? We haven't heard of any disappearances, significant ones, in the last two years. So now you're going, now you've gone from, I want to know information <laughs> about becoming to, you see oh, where you're kind of Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. That's a bit. So well, I'm going mean, to let you backtrack on that one if it, you want. Uh, I, it's too late. I mean, I flipped okay. up, didn't I? So, yeah, so yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> there are no killings. We kill nothing. We only give the night demon what is already his. But what about those beautiful bloodworms that I saw? You know, they were feeding, you know, what, what, yeah, what, what do they eat? You know, like, yeah, where do you get the food from? The bloodworms are a means to an end. Surely you saw that. Can you I, saw can what I, we were able to do with them. Can I just interject here? Because from what I saw of Molaram, is he had no idea the night demon even existed. Yeah. It was all to do with the bloodworm. And uh, when Molaram... So is it, okay, I, so hold on one sec. So is Demetriev listening in on this? Or what? how did this... Because remember, he's uh, Elliot is questioning him. Granted, you know we're not going to say that you guys didn't hear this because it's just too okay, blah blah blah. I didn't hear. I didn't hear. It's fun. It's fun. No, no. But what I'm what I'm saying is is so is there is there a way to bring some more of the party in on this, or are we just going to continue with Elliot? Well, I'm speaking quietly to to the cultists because I want to maintain the illusion that I'm you know not wanting to do this to hear. But I'm aware that they're around me, and if they're close enough and quiet enough themselves, they may be able to catch what we're saying. No, I'm not. Yeah, he will. He will. Fo I'll. I'll say this for the role playing part. He'll focus on you, Elliot. And if the others, I won't even make a role for it. If the others want to kind of listen, and kind of be close enough. I mean, it's a, it's an evening, right? It's the the sound carries a little bit. He, as he gets more comfortable with you, his voice will increase in tone slightly. You know, things like that. Yes. Well, I think it's okay in like in the evening settings for us all to talk to him, right? Whereas really, Elliot wants to be doing this while we're traveling, right? Like. This is when he wants to have like the secret conversations when it's because he's there with him like for, you know, 12 hours a day or whatever. Right. Traveling. So that's a that's a lot of time to be asking him, having conversations, asking him occasional things, working, working with good graces. Right. And like yeah, we're, we've assumed. Yeah, this is just massage I mean, all you know. of that. Whereas so it, it's the night would be, I would guess, when like all of this conversation of the I want to join would be happening on the trip. Right. And then the evening would be like maybe the harder questioning from the other people. Yeah, I guess this would be taking place over a long period of time as well, right? Mm. You know, yeah, the which is fine. here or yeah. there when people aren't, you know, directly next to us and this kind of thing. Fair enough. Mm. Mm. So I guess, I guess, I guess, Daka would would go over and like say, uh, "Did Elliot? Did Elliot tell you why we're going south?" So he he doesn't respond to you. He's still he's very distrustful of you now because you had promised him that you were going to go see the night demon. He's much more he's much more responsive to Elliot because Elliot's taken the time to have conversations with him. Mm. You lied to him. So did Dimitriov and so did Flargal and Flargal mm. stole his food. Stole his lunch. Didn't lie to him. <laughs> Didn't like I didn't, but Flago I didn't did steal, steal his I didn't steal anything. <laughs> I confiscated it. <laughs> yeah, I think so, that's Daka, fair. honestly, if, if you asked him, you know, do you know why we're heading? He would just he would he would ignore you. I think. Okay. Well, I mean, you're a man of the law, right? You're a gray. Yeah. You're I mean, the well, one who, who 
you I'm, have his custody. You're, you know. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to help the guy and and that, but uh, if he's unresponsive, I guess I'd look at Elliot and then think, oh well, he it's up to him to uh, break through. So now you I'll also have opportunities. We'll also we can also say that there are opportunities if you guys want to discuss what you would ask him that you would be away from him. You know, maybe saddling the horses and you kind of left him, you know, chained around a smaller tree type deal. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. Could, I was going to go and explain everything and try and get in with him, but if he's not interested, then uh, leave it to Elliot, who's talking to him for longer. Right? You could definitely give it a shot. I don't want to. I don't want to block you from this. No, no, I'm it's, just saying. It's okay. You know, if, if your first question is that, <laughs> yeah, um, I would ask you to do a persuasion roll again at disadvantage, and we see how he'd respond to it. But he's going to be very negative because you're the cop. Yeah, but I mean, I just said, yeah, I, as Elliot told you, while we're going south, I think that's quite a reasonable thing. But uh, I shall, I shall do this. T- this. This thing, this roll. Oh, not the nut twenty. So. Oh man, sixteen is still good though. The twenty would have been better. <laughs> so, um, all that he says is that our road leads to the night demon in the end. Yeah. 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 That's it. We, 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 we're, we're going. We're going. Uh, we've got some stuff to do. We've got plenty of time. Uh, but you know, you, you'll see him. You'll see him. Don't worry about it. I just want to, like, you know, kind of... Uh, no, that's fine, yeah. Sure. So I, await, I await to revel in his presence. <laughs> yeah, I want to, I want to keep him looks, outside as much looks, as possible. He kind of looks down on you a little bit like non-believer, but he's still, <laughs> like, he knows you could beat the crap out of him because you're all chained up, right? <laughs> yeah. So he's not going to be a prick about it, right? Well, I'd let him out of his chains and kick the shit out of him. Don't worry about that. Exactly, and he knows that. He's not <laughs> stupid, right? He's been worked over a couple of times by Kalon's men. <laughs> So yeah, so I think I'd do that. Try and you know, try and just get his trust a little bit. But then, like, because there's no need to be harsh, right? At the end of the day, it's uh, he's fucked. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think leave him, leave him, and try and get Elliot to work him over. Like, Demetra, what were you? What would? What did you want to add to that? Uh not much, mate. Not much. I was, I was just asking that uh, the encounter that I got beforehand was that Molaram wasn't trying to summon night demon he was trying to summon the blood worm so why is he worshipping the night demon and not the blood worm no and that's a very good point because you do think back to that right molaram did summon according to the night demon his one of his favorite pets which was that massive blood worm right Mm-hmm. And Elliot, you had just asked why the worms, why the beautiful worms, and then that was when everybody else started to kind of chime in. Mm-hmm. So I'll restate what he said there, which was, you know, the, the worms are, 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 are a means to an end. Did you see what happened when we were ascending with the worms? I, I, saw, uh, I, I saw the, you know, the, the glorious transformation that took place to the, those who were, you know, blessed enough to consume the worms. You know how 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 long how long was Molaram searching for such you know beautiful creatures? Did you find the incubation chamber? Uh, well, we found lots of worms, uh, <laughs> lovely worms. Uh, yes. Oh no! Did we find the incubation chamber? <laughs> I guess that was the big pit thing, right, with all of the blood shit in it. Oh, well, the, like the river of blood, the river mm. of worm. Well, Eli- Elliot, so you have an opportunity to just be honest with him here, right? Oh uh, yeah, f- okay, fair enough, fair enough. Wow, I, 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 I don't, I'm not so sure we did. What was? Tell me, tell me more about the incubation chamber. <laughs> that is where we stayed when we were transforming. Oh, there so were the- three, there were there were several who were undergoing the process. You must be chained to the walls so that you don't do damage to yourself while the final stages are happening. It's a beautiful thing. We continuously feed them the sections of the blood worms and they transform. I was to be on the next batch. Oh man, that's that's so unlucky that you know they we came in and killed you all on the, the one before you were due to be done. But that sounds that sounds just beautifully you know, be- beautifully gargantuan, you know, that I, I can only imagine oh, man, that's unlucky. <laughs> I can only imagine what it would be like to uh, to to um <laughs> Oh uh, damn! You know, to, to have undergone such a such a transformation, and 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 in the end, do you know what we saw? We saw the biggest bloodworm of all, a bloodworm to to you know more than rival any of those we had already seen. Night demon's pet itself, a vast, glorious, bloated creature. 
Then he succeeded. He succeeded. It was there. We we saw it. And then and then Night Demon. What of what of Night Demon? Was Molam also searching for, for Night Demon, or was he just a worm guy? The Night Demon is responsible for all of this. He's responsible for all of us. So you did know of him then before you set out. You knew of this glorious be, god. We wanted to be with him, but I did not know we were that close. Yeah, you were closer than you you could have scarcely dreamed, and and now you I must take me to him. You must, you must take me to him. Well, I'll let you in on a secret. We're going to Steelbury. We're three days out or so, and after that, we will be in in you know four or five days time. We will be heading, we will be heading back to the caverns and taking the catacombs and taking you with us. And you know you you will meet your your divine uh, god. Why didn't you just leave me in that damn steel box until you were actually headed there, little one? Uh, what heck, ag ag aggro? Yeah, watch the tone. I thought we'd been getting on quite nicely, but uh, we, uh, your god, our god, has has blessed me, and I hold up my finger and show him my ring, uh, with the ability to you know to teleport him at will. So uh, we had to bring you so, with us. So, so when, okay, so give me a dexterity check. Oh god, is the ring gonna fall off? No, this isn't. The, this isn't Lord of the Rings. It doesn't just slip off your finger. He might uh, try and go for it, mightn't he? Oh, oh ah, oh, Dex. Don't wait. So I just click on Dexterity. Yep, Dexterity. Yeah, no, normal. Normal. Don't roll a one. Yeah, oh, you've got inspiration, so it's all right. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Wait. Did you want to use your inspiration on that? I I can't see it. It disappeared. What did I roll? A three. That shows me a three. Oh, I'll use inspiration. I kind of like to keep. Which would have been a four total because you got a plus one. I used it. Should I just do it again then? Yeah, you just do it again. Don't roll a one though. <laughs> you need to click your inspiration dice. Okay, there's your I, ten. I clicked it. Yeah, it's when I press all. It's when I press push to talk while the dice is rolling. It makes the uh... dice vanish. <laughs> so the minute you say the ring, right? He does. He does. He does lurch at you. Um, I would have required about a five or less to fail this because he's chained. You're nimble. You're probably not, you know, six inches from him, right? So he does, he does lurch for it, and he says, "You have something of the demons," and he and he and he lurches for it and falls short and kind of falls on his face because you know his. We'll say that his feet are chained through, you know, the the roots of a tree or something along those lines, right? He can't just run off, basically. And I, I kind of jerk backwards a little bit as he does, and I say, my friend, contain yourself. Be patient, you know. Your God is eternal. He will wait. We will see him in four or five days, and you will have your chance to seek from him whatever bounties you so desire. So he he, he, he backs back up. He's back on his knees now instead of on his butt, right, because he had, he had lunged forward, and he, and he wipes a little bit of the dust from his face, and, and you can see he is just fixated on your ring now. He's not um, the only one. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> it wasn't anything constructive. <laughs> I uh, I put my hands in my pockets. And, uh... his, his eyes just follow the right hand into your into your pocket. <laughs> and, and, I mean, and I and I say to him, you know, I, I I wish to know more. You know, I I desire to know more in order to please my God the best. You know, I I need to know. You know exactly what I can do for him. You know, t tell me. You know, what what do you know? Well, what do you know about Night Demon? If you do not know what the Night Demon desires, then you have not truly been called. I, you see, I think you're full of rubbish because I've spent a lot more time with Night Demon than you have. So uh, I don't know. Uh, may, may, maybe you don't know anything about it. And, uh, maybe when, you, maybe when you're not we are called, we travel. When we travel, we arrive. When we arrive. We ascend. If you are truly called, you have no choice but to ascend. You have no choice but to arrive. You travel in the wrong direction, little one. Well, we, I must, like... we must turn around. I plan on arriving, as I said. You know, be, be patient. You know, Night Demon itself, themselves, you know, gave, 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 gave us you know a, a t 10 days you know to to be parted from him so there is no rush here a gnome pr arrives precisely when he means to <laughs> oh, jesus <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> um so so yeah if if 
you know, all I'm saying is that, you know, we need to be best prepared for meeting him, you know, so as to, you know, please him thoroughly. So if there's anything <laughs> that you can think we can do, then that would be, oh, fuck off, then that would be a good idea. <laughs> The only thing that you need know is that we need to ascend. If you were truly called, we must ascend. And to what? To which plane do you refer? A plane? We must ascend. We must consume the worm. I see. That's uh, interesting. Well, it was nice talking to you. Uh, yeah, we should we should talk more. <laughs> Thank you. And... Perhaps at, at this point, you know, I don't know, somebody comes over to us, so I kind of give a nod to the cultists and just wander away a little bit. And, I, and then I beckon people over. Everybody, <clears throat> we need to eat the worm. <laughs> wow. What do you think? Is there any, is there any left? <laughs> I mean, there were loads of worms, right? There must be some left. We've just gone away from Kalon. Kalon and uh, Orionensis might have had some of the worm. Like, but in know. the catacombs, right? There's some left in the catacombs. Mm -hmm. yeah. You go to the catacombs, eat it. Uh, Are you serious, Elliot? <laughs> well, yeah, from what the guy was saying, you know, it's got something to do with the worms, right? Eating the worms. Maybe. Okay, maybe... so let, let's go back. So you remember what happened when, when, when. When the worms fed on human or on any flesh, you don't know if it was human or not. You only saw it consume humans, right? The worms were healed by that. So as they yeah. consumed, their their wounds were healing, and it was almost instantaneous, right? Yeah. Then you saw sections of the worms being consumed by by various levels of the cultists, right? The 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 craziest of them being the abominations which were just feeding on them right whenever you saw a cultist consume any section of the worm or whenever you saw an abomination consume any section of the worm they grew stronger faster harder hitting right mm -hmm. and the largest of the abominations with that you saw remember their muscles had grown so large that they were bursting and separating their skin open remember that the skin was actually tearing as the muscles and the bones grew. Mm. Sounds a good idea for Dimitri of it. <laughs> well, yeah, we don't need to all do it right, but we are one person. Like the the, the guy was adamant about the worms being linked to to Night Demon. You know, maybe we can somehow, you know, if we can ascend to his realm, then maybe we can fight him there or something, or rescue the rescue the girls from his realm. It's like I think... some kind of heist. I think the last I think, person, I think the last person we crap. tried to ascend to Mo to his realm was Molaram, and mm. look what happened to him. No, yeah. Molaram was wanted to bring Night Demon to our realm, surely. Well, and we go back to Dimitriov's point of was it him he tried to bring here, or was it his pet? Yeah, he brought he brought the worm, right? The largest worm that you've seen to date. He he took that still beating heart, right? Drove that dagger through it through whatever ceremony he was doing. And then that bell peeled, and then the largest worm you've seen to date appeared on that side of the dais. Yeah, I hate, I hate to say it, Elliot, but I think you're way off in your calculation. And shortly thereafter, Night Demon shows up, and then Molaram was extolling his virtues and how, you know, he had the power to summon him. Though you don't know, again, I, you know, I would say that Dimitriov is probably on the right track here. He didn't realize that one led to the next. Well, and then when you talk to Night Demon, Night Demon did specifically say, this is one of my favorite pets, right? Mm. So was Night Demon there because Molaron brought him, or was Night Demon there because the pet worm was there, and he was saying, no, 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 horse shit, that's mine. Well, you, you make a good point, Dimitri, of maybe the cultist knows nothing, maybe we're just being like... Oh, maybe he knows everything, him. and he's leading you up the garden path. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I didn't get like, the impression about him. To be honest, my main impression it. was that he didn't really know what he was talking about. Give, give me a perception check, Elliot, with, with advantage, because we'll say you've been having these conversations over the last day and a half, two days, right? An hour here, a half hour there, two hours here, and you've built up somewhat of a relationship with him. He's being pretty honest. 
Um, yeah, he's probably is leaving out some parts of this or that simply because he doesn't trust you fully. But you can see that that he believed his ultimate destination was to ascend, and his belief of ascension was to become one of those abominations. Mm. So the the goal, like you know, when when he said to you, "Did you find the incubation chamber?" There are several there waiting. There are several there ascending. They have to be chained up so that they don't do damage to themselves, right? There's a process here. Well, then I, I suppose you're right, Demetrius. It sounds like, you know, they're worshipping the worms and not worshipping Night Demon. I don't know why, you know, the, the cultist, you know, went on about Night Demon, but, you know, perhaps he's just an idiot. <laughs> well, I think he just wants us to get back there because that's his only means of escape, right? He, he, he probably mm. knows nothing of Night Demon, but... If anything is going to get him out of the shackles of our, like, imprisonment of him, it will be Night Demon, right? So, like, if I, if you were imprisoning me, and I was trying to raise the worm, and I knew nothing about Night Demon, I would say, bring me back to Night Demon, because the only way that I'm going to get out of this situation is through this Night Demon. It's a good point, because the other poor fucker's still underneath, uh, Kale on the turds, uh... <laughs> Places well, this, he, the so he so. honestly wants to be he knows who or what the night demon is he doesn't i'm not going to say that he's like you know oh we know exactly what he is how he was created what he's supposed to do it's like there's this say, level of yeah. power right if i was, if I was in prison for... by anyone i would say whatever i would need to say to get out of that imprisonment mm -hmm. right so and he's but, I think you're being led up the garden path, basically. Well, El Elliot, Elliot's honest feeling is that he is being truthful. But to Dimitriev's point, what is his truth? Get out of this situation. Right, Please. yeah. So it could it could be that he's telling you what you want to hear, but he's also, I mean, it's it's kind of a, it's, 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 it's a tale that really, I mean, you'd have to make up a lot to get into this detail, right? Like, why would you... That's why you feel like it's being yeah, resolved. Yeah, like, like when you lie, you don't, you don't just make up a load of bullshit. You tell the truth ninety percent. Ex there you go, exactly. And you twist ten percent, and then that's a. I never lie. But he, but he definitely wants to get back to the night demon. He wants it. Maybe he doesn't want to get back to the night demon. Maybe that's he just only, wants like, to get back to the temple, right? Well, He's, yeah. He wants to go there. That's the only way I see him seeing himself getting free. Hmm. And the fact that he's pushing it makes me not want to bother. What we need to do is go to the libraries. We need to talk to educated people and we need to find out an alternative. Like, honestly, we either accept the one door or we look at a way of getting rid of this entity. So we either, um, like, we either go, like, mad and try and take on a god or we accept the daughter or we just do what Flagel Slump says and we just don't even entertain it and say you take all three we don't care unfortunately I feel as though the third option will you know not be palatable to Night Demon. But what, what is the outcome of that third option? We don't even know. Like, well, I, I, I assume it's, you know, we are stuck there until we choose or otherwise. Hmm. We yeah, need to find a way to trick to him. Choice. We need to find a way to trick him. So we need to, we, yeah, we need to go to the library, find out more about the old Oh, hang on, hang on. Like, what do we trade for these three women? And what would you be willing to trade? This is my thing. Is like, What does an old to... god want? Well, maybe this fanatic, right? That was my idea, you know? Like, this guy really worships him. Yeah, but then know, the so... fanatic really wants to get back there, which really put me off. Yeah, no, I, no, was, I was, I was thinking the same thing, Dakar. We can't trust I was anything like, I, was like, I was like, yeah, Dakar, I was like, we'll give the fanatics instead of the, the women. Hmm. But the fact that he's so willing to go makes me think that that outcome is worse than... But, I mean, that is what he'd want as well. So, like, it's it's... That's okay, right? As long as we I win, it doesn't that. matter if he wins. Well, because like he wanted the sum, like you know, they all wanted to summon the the blood things and the night demons and like you know what I mean. So it's not surprising that he wants to be involved in it. Like that was the whole thing, right? He he asked to go, right? Like that was the thing. So because he was dead enthusiastic about going, 
And I thought, well, if he wants to go, maybe Night Demon wants him, right? Maybe. So if Night Demon might want him, then that's something. Uh, Jim, by our last encounter, I feel like he doesn't give a shit. <laughs> no, he didn't give a shit about Maul Ram, but then Maul Ram took away his little pet, didn't he? So. <laughs> well, and also remember, man, Maul Ram was like, I am going to be his number. Like, Maul Ram, if you're... Mm. And again, we don't know the machinations of, of whom we might consider God on this real earth, right? Or whom we might consider whatever deity, right? But if like that, let's just pretend that that deity showed up on earth and like somebody like just started proclaiming, man, I'm I'm his number two. He's, this is mine or she, this, she's mine or whatever. Da, da, da. How would that individual react, right? I mean, basically Night Demon turned around and went, no, you're not, bang, <laughs> right? Yeah, so he might be quite all right with this fanatic. You never know. I think it's worth a shot. I mean, what else are we going to do, right? Worst well, thing, yeah, worst I mean, thing, worst. Library. I mean, we're going to the library, aren't we? We're we're, we're traveling to the library now. <laughs> it's just that well, we let's, can't. let's hit, I let's hit the this. library. I don't want to do with this anymore. So, were there were there any other were there any other questions, Elliot, that 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 you would just ask? And you don't necessarily have to do this in character. Let's see if there's any other information you might want to try yeah, to provide. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not not really. I've I've kind of come to the conclusion that the guy doesn't really know much, and he's kind of his feelings towards uh, Night Demon are a little bit confused. I'm I'm not sure how much. Yeah, as Dimitrov suggests, I'm not sure how much help you know, he, he can be anyway. Really. So mm -hmm. Yeah. So so also consider right. You had Molaram on the top, or you believe that was the guy on top, right? You're ninety nine point nine five percent sure in the cult. Then you had the priests, right? Then you had the acolytes. Then you had these guys. So you're talking to like, and who knows what rank he held of those guys, but that's like four levels down is who you're talking to. And when you consider like cults and or cultish behavior, like like who, the guy at the top knows the real truth of why he's got all these people doing whatever he's doing, right? And then you've got these people who he lets into his inner circle. And then you've got these people who he's trying to decide, should I let them in my inner circle? And then you've got this guy. But it's the people that are the bottom that are the most fanatical anyway, right? So like, yeah. uh, it can be yes, because they're also usually the ones that end up being sacrificed. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. You don't take your best people and are like, oh, let's kill this guy, right? <laughs> it's always like, is this guy <laughs> useful? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's keep him around a little while longer. <laughs> if he's not, we'll just sacrifice him. And even if he is useful, when he starts to figure out that he wants to leave because he found out the truth, then we'll <laughs> sacrifice him anyway. You know. <laughs> Yeah, so I think dude, this, this is, is a cult through and through, dude. You saw these guys, they're eating pieces of the bloodworm, dude. They're chopping dudes up, they're kidnapping, they're murdering, they're feeding. I mean, this is not you can't think of this as a as a a well thought out process, right? There's <laughs> there's not a lot of book learning behind this, right? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's Although okay. they are getting their knowledge from somewhere. Yeah. So it's so Elliot's Elliot's like tried to uh you know, try to get in with him a bit for four days. And then I guess Dak is going to mostly ignore him, right? Because he's driving the thing. And then like at night, going to ignore him. Most of us are going to ignore him, except Elliot, who's going to try and try and, you know, which is what he's been doing. And then, so then we get to Normbury. And I guess we do we, we could leave him Steelbury. with um, Steelbury. Yeah, sorry. I was, and then, so then do we leave, do we leave him with uh, Elon? Elon could guard him, right? And then us, us four could look for... Uh... The, the, yeah, theoretically, you guys could find, like, Elliot would know a spot, like, near the entrance where, you know, travelers may be kind of hanging out and would have a little inn and all that that kind of, you know, has larger beds, blah, blah, blah. You could simply park the wagon, leave him chained to it, and Elon could watch him ostensibly for, you know, however long you need it. I'm not going to make this a hard thing where you're going to roll every three hours to see if he escapes it's it's a pretty simple thing yeah that, that could be a good idea then it's just us for trying to figure shit out yep did we hand off the prisoner to the gnomish police force <laughs> no the knops <laughs> the knops <laughs> No, so um, so the um, the prisoner is going to hang out with Elon at the wagon near the entrance, where he will be guarded and chained the entire time. The no lease. The no lease. With the no lease. Mm. <laughs> with the nonstables. <laughs> the no lease. The no lease is pretty good to me. 
<laughs> so um, I think that's a pretty good spot to cut it right there, boys, because we are going to head um, starting next week. We will then, I'll have all the, I'll figure out why the map won't upload and all of that good stuff. Not a big deal. We will travel deeper into Steelbury. Um, Elliot, what I need from you, because the other ones, the other folks here, and then we'll wrap up the episode, Jim, with your clothes. The other folks here don't, um, don't really know Steelbury, right? So they wouldn't leave your side. Mm -hmm. It's not like they would just travel off into the corners. Um, mm -hmm. Flargal, if you want, because of your nature, I'll allow that. If you want to send me a message as to what you might kind of do, would you want to try to sneak away? But Elliot, why don't you, if you can, send me a message when you get a chance sometime this week and just tell me, obviously you guys are going to go to, um, go to the University of, um, of Edenome, <laughs> but w is there anywhere else that you would go while you're here, keeping in mind the information you received a few weeks ago? keeping in mind though, that type of thing so that I kind of know what to plan for okay. next week as well. Sure. I mean, I'm, I'm most thinking like we're just so focused on this right that maybe we won't have time. But if we get there in the um, chief library, what was the librarian called? Great librarian. Yeah, that'd be, great that'd be librarian. Good. If we get there in the great librarians, like, yeah, uh, yeah, nothing, you know, nothing here. If you savvy, no information, kind of anything, then yeah, we might as well spend a couple of days you know doing some sightseeing. well i mean even even a couple hours could be taken to go yeah do yeah, something yeah. specific it doesn't you know it doesn't necessarily have to take you three days to go sure. somewhere you know mm. i was just thinking if there was anything that 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 from your standpoint that you would either want to and like i said i'm kind of leaving this open for the whole role play thing like if there's something else that you would do yeah. just so i know and have a you know a little 10 12 minute thing planned for it sure they're good at making things, aren't they, Norm? So I guess I could look for a magical crossbow. <laughs> a magical hand crossbow. <laughs> if there's time. <laughs> With your gold? No way, dude. Oh well. I can I could no, steal I'm it. I'm joking. I'm joking. I could steal um, but anyway, it. yeah, let's 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 leave it there. It's a little bit of a it's not really a solid cliffhanger, but it's it's a good start for the next episode so that we do whatever we're going to do in Steelbury, and then we're making our decision, and either we're moving back and on, or we're deciding never to talk to Night Demon again and see where <laughs> that takes us, right? <laughs> yep. Glorious. Thank you very much, everybody, uh, especially Jack Bull, of course. Amazing. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic. <laughs>